Welcome, aloha. Welcome to Talk Story with John Waihe. Boy, do we have an exciting show for you today. I have as a guest, Representative Bet Fukumoto Chang. And here's the exciting thing. She is right now currently in session, you know, doing good things for all of you. But uh, more importantly, she is there as the leader of the minority in the House of Representatives. So, Bet, welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you know, um, I've been wanting to have you on the show for quite a while, yeah. as you know. And the reason is that I think that you're one of the more fascinating people <laughs> at the, at the uh, state that's good. <laughs> yeah, it, it is good. <laughs> it is good. I mean, if in politics, if you're not fascinating, you know, it's rough. Good, good point. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, okay, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, okay, where um, did you grow up and all of this mm -hmm. sort of thing? Um, well, I grew up mostly in Mililani. We moved there when I was 10. So wow. the, most of what I remember uh, is the district that I represent. Um, but born in Salt Lake, but born in Honolulu. Yeah. So you, you, you grew up in Mililani, yeah. which is your current district? Yes. Yes. So you, the people that are there are, are like your neighbors, although Mililani oh, yeah. grows really fast. So. Oh, yeah. Well, the house that I live in now didn't exist when I was when we first moved up there, right? All of Mililani Malka wasn't even there. It was just red dirt, right? Um, so I remember that, and I remember everything getting built. It's right. exciting, yeah. So, no, so tell me, okay, here you are. You're a, a progressive uh, Young Republican, uh, progressive meaning that you are you have committed yourself to uh, gov to government service for mm -hmm. all the people, mm -hmm. and the normal course of event for uh, politicians starting up in Hawaii is to go and be a Democrat, but you <laughs> chose to be a, a, a Republican. Yep. No. Yep. And I've always I, I wanted to ask you this question forever: Why? Okay. Um, well, my first job out uh, in the legislature. Um, it was 2008, and I wanted to be a professor, but I didn't want to keep going to school. You want to be a professor? professor. I got, I, of, of what? I, I will literature. Come. Okay, English great. English literature. You're like, you're like my wife. You think everybody ought to... Yeah, Who I've met, that. yes. Yeah. Everybody should read well and, and <laughs> enjoy literacy, right? Yeah. Um, so I wanted to be a, a professor and just wanted to stay in the library all day long. That was my plan. Um, <laughs> but in 2008, the markets crashed, right? And I right. needed to get a job. Right. So the legislature was hiring, and oh. the Minority Research Department was hiring, um, and I started working there. So, so at the Minority Research o Office. Yeah, so I it, wasn't a Republican at the time. No, yeah. but you were somebody that they recruited. You I know, needed a job, yes. Yeah, once again, <laughs> yeah. you know, once again, I, you can't believe the number of people that I've met that really, we, that, uh, I'm a Democrat, as you mm -hmm. know, right? I've gone so far as being a Democrat that I'm actually going to the convention in a oh, week or two. Okay. Yeah. But, um, but, I, but I always constantly learn of all the people we didn't recruit into the party, and, and you want them, <laughs> you want them got away. But what was it about the party, the Republican uh -huh. Party itself, that, that fascinated you? Right. I mean, was there, were there particular values or press, uh, you mm -hmm. know, pre, uh, precedents that, that um, might have been of interest? Well, I, I mean, as you know, uh, the state is majority Democrat, always right. has been, right? Um, and when I first started working for the minority, I, I really, I, I'm a moderate, I'm a political moderate. I feel like I could go, I could have gone either way. Um, but when I started working for the minority, I just felt like these people don't have a voice. That There's this significant viewpoint that just isn't ever getting voiced in the legislature. Right. And for me, I always like an underdog. Right. <laughs> um, I'm the type that cheers for the Mets <laughs> instead of the Yankees, although yeah, the Mets oh, yeah, are a big well, deal now, well, right? I, I cheer for the Cubs. Oh, okay. I've been doing it for years, you know? I, I keep waiting for that <laughs> one time when the, a miracle would happen, right. you know? Yep, so that's me. I, I, <laughs> I uh, always cheer for the underdog. And, and in Hawaii, that was the Republicans. And um, I just, I sort of liked this, this story and this idea that, that there was a chance for more dialogue and more diversity in the legislature. And I, I didn't feel like the currently elected Republicans were really doing that well. Um, and I thought we needed more people. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's a great ambition. You know, they are, one of the things that I've often thought about is and when I'm talking to, uh, you know, I say young, but meaning at least, um, you know, chronologically, meaning my, I was governor in the 90s, right, and the 80s. So uh, people who have come on board since then is uh, whether, 
whether they should evolve their sort of uniquely Hawaiian, meaning Hawaii, um, version of the, of the Republican principles. And, and I say that because actually Hawaii has had a whole string of Republican heroes, starting from Prince Kohio, mm -hmm. who was obviously very much in favor of restoring uh, some of the land back to Native Hawaiians and doing things like that. And then you had Hiram Fong, mm -hmm. remember Senator Fong? Senator Fong is an unsung hero in Hawaii because people forget that he actually was a father of um, Asian immigration to the mm. United States. Mm. It was his bills that opened up the uh, immigration system and actually, if you trace it back far enough, caused the whole revolution in uh, higher education and, and the rest. That was a senator from Hawaii yeah. and, 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 and a Republican yeah. one. And obviously, Pat Psyche, right. we hear about uh, uh, Congresswoman Mink on the Democratic mm -hmm. side, um, and, and rightly so for her accomplishments. But Pat, Pat Psyche, who is a friend of mine, although I don't really like some of her endorsements, but don't, <laughs> you know, don't tell her that. But she's, you know, she yeah. was all part of that, uh, you know, the, um, what is it, Article 9 battle mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And she followed up with it. Mm -hmm. And so, and yet, um, what the public hears about is we, we never seem to talk about uh, those, uh, those individuals, those Republicans, yeah. those Republicans who were strong enough uh, from time to time to demand their way into leadership yeah. uh, in the state legislature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, I'm hoping that uh, your group of Republicans begin to realize that uh, you, that we have um, a, 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 we have a Republican ideology that may be real suited to Hawaii. You know? Yeah, yeah. There's a rich history um, right. for for Republicans in Hawaii and even nationally that we just haven't been drawing on for for decades, really. Yeah, for real. Yeah. And it's and it's you know I, I don't want to use his name, but. You know who I'm talking about, right? Your presumptive nominee. <laughs> you know, it's really sad <laughs> to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of my favorite people uh, in politics was uh, Ro Ro Rockefeller. Okay. And yeah. he had a buddy named John Lindsay, okay. who, when I was uh, in college, was the mayor of New York, one of the most progressive mayors in any city. And um, it was a Republican. So you got a great history. Yeah, so what are you going to yeah. do about it now? Right. <laughs> so tell me what's your vision for Hawaii. Yeah. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of space, especially now, and you see the different things that are happening, especially on a city level, but on a state level too, um, where people are demanding more fiscal conservatism. And that's something that I think as a party we, ha we should have to offer. We don't talk about it enough. Uh, we get sort of wrapped up in other issues. But I think um, being able to say, especially to, to millennials, to people my age, to say it, who, who tend to be more fiscally conservative, right. that we're willing to protect your pocketbooks. Um, we want to make sure everybody is well taken care of, but everybody is, is handling the money responsibly. Right. right, and I think I think trying to sort of moderate the tone um, of political discourse is also my goal. So, in addition to trying to offer people sort of a be better path forward um, for the economy, I think we also need to start showing um, the, the people of Hawaii that we are willing to change the way we do politics, um, start getting along a little bit better, and work and collaboratively. Work collaboratively. Maybe you ought to yeah. run for Congress. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. You know yeah. because that's where you really Gosh, need that. We but, really do need it, yeah. And, uh, you know, but, but talking about, um, you know, Hawaii and being fiscally conservative, one of the great challenges, I think, uh, for, uh, if I, for, a, for a legislator today is to begin to realize that, uh, and, I, and I made this, said this in speeches, that all too often sometimes we, we start to... Um, start to idealize our accomplishments. You saw the Democrats, were, for example, um, I, I know you're in special session now. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with a number of issues, including the neighbor Highland hospitals. But for example, precisely that, we uh, were so bound to the fact that the, that we, that the Democrats helped to produce a, a safety net, a medical safety net mm -hmm. across the state. Mm -hmm. But the society evolved and changed. 
And so the way that that's paid for may have to evolve as well. Right. So, you know, it seems to me that if I were coming in as a young uh, representative, whether it would be as a Democrat or, or, or as a Republican, that would be a challenge to come up with a new idea, a new yeah. solution, a new way of doing things. Is that sort of what you hope will happen? Yeah, I think so, and I think a lot of that comes from putting aside party labels, which is which is sort of what you're saying, um, this sort of entrenched ideology that each party has. Um, I, I think it's hard to come to the table when you're going to automatically say, I'll never increase any tax ever, right? right? And and as a Republican, so many Republicans do that, but I think you have to come to the table with all options, knowing that, for me, I'm coming from the perspective of being a per fiscal conservative, so I don't want to raise any taxes, but right. I recognize that it's always a give and take, right? Right, but, but the, yeah. and, and, that, and that's, I think, is really important. Yeah. But it's also, I think we ought to recognize that um, some of the principles, for example, dealing with the dignity of the human being, or the idea of personal freedom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, this, the millennium generation, is, uh, would be ripe for that. Uh, and yeah. and one, uh, one obvious would be the uh, legalization of medical marijuana, mm -hmm. which is a, a generational issue. Yeah. You know, in the, um, in the, at the Democratic, uh, platform committee, mm -hmm. there that uh, there was a vote, uh, and everything was sort of worked out between the Sanders group and the Hillary group, and all of this. Right. You know, this <laughs> politics. But on one issue, there was a, like a rebellion of the leadership, and it had to do with medical marijuana, uh -huh. and uh, it passed. It passed. So it's now legalization is now in the. Democratic Party platform by one vote. Mm -hmm. And it was because, and literally, the young people on the both sides uh -huh. created a new vision. Yeah, right? yeah. Is there any room for that in Hawaii with uh, some of the uh, Democratic mm -hmm. reps and yourself just like grabbing an issue and saying, you know, yeah. um, I don't think we, um, we, you know, if we're going to talk about uh, public safety, for example, then is there new ways of doing it? Yeah. I think, I think the issue would be affordable housing. If there's one thing we could hold on to, it's got to be affordable housing. Um, and I think that there are a lot of young legislators that can come together around solutions for that. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, we're going to take uh, a break pretty soon. Okay. But, that, but affordable housing is something that excites yeah. me. You yeah. know? And, and I we guess you. Yeah. Because especially as you, since you live on, you know, yeah. where all the housing used to be affordable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, yes. Anyway. We're going to be back in a minute or so, and we're talking to the House of Representative Minority Leader, Bet Fukumoto Chang. So, thank you. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna. I hope you please visit us this summer. It's a wonderful summer. It's actually a cooler summer than we're used to. But I hope that you come back and visit us and watch our show, Education, Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, here on Think Tech Hawaii. It's at noon every Wednesday. See you then. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham with The Economy and You, and I'd like to invite you each week to come watch my show each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Aloha, everyone. I'm Maria Mera, and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show, Viva Hawaii on ThinTech Hawaii, every other Monday at 3 p.m. We are here to talk about news, issues, and events local and around the world. Join me. Aloha. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Wahee. And today our guest is Minority Leader of the House of Representatives, Bet Fukumoto Chang. And we were just talking about affordable housing. Yeah. And you were telling me that there was a whole slew of bills that actually the millennials or the younger yeah. members actually work together on a, yeah. on a non uh, bipartisan basis. Yeah, so we have something called the Future Caucus, and it's the 35 and under um, wow. legislators. So we um, all got together this year and said, let's, let's do something about affordable housing. Um, and put together, spent a lot of time in meetings and put together uh, about a package of about six bills that I think um, all really could make a difference. And did they pass? 
a lot of them did in different forms. So um, the governor had a similar bill, which was to uh, lift the cap on the rental housing trust fund. Um, he right. incre I think we lifted it all together, but he just increased it a little bit. Um, so the legislature did do that. Um, one was something about tax increment financing to allow the city to okay. basically, which, which has been in the news lately with the rail and everything right. else. Um, another one that we're still working on, and it got out of the House, but we didn't get it out of the Senate, is um, a well, bill to... Well, it was all <laughs> There you go. <laughs> um, we need to explain more, maybe. Um, it it would have helped to redevelop Kapalama, um, especially right. with transportation coming through. Oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe the rail is coming through. Um, mm, yeah. But this idea of sort of better, better utilizing that space for affordable housing... Kind of like Kakako, but Kakako hasn't been affordable, right? So no, can we do the we went same completely thing? the other way, unfortunately. Right, right. So can we do the same thing, and what sort of things can we do to make sure it stays affordable um, in Kapalama? So I think it's the best place, really, to build. Um, there isn't a lot of opposition because, right, I mean, it, it's in the urban core already. It's right. near downtown. Um, and well, there's there is, state people, are po when, you, when they only see luxury apartments exactly. being built, that's exactly. when you'll have opposition. right, right. You know, I, I, I dreamt of that happening in Kaka'aku, but I, mm -hmm. I was, you know, it really ought to be yeah. a place for young families yeah. um, who are getting started. Right. You know, right. until they can finally move out to Mililani. Right. And someday, <laughs> Which is very expensive now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And someday make enough money to move back into town right. and stay, the, you know, right. in one of the senior housing or in Kahala or something. You know? Right. Right. So let me... Um, what about uh, the budget itself? You know, mm -hmm. it, it seemed to me like one of the things about the state budget that the average citizen doesn't appreciate is how much of it is beyond your discretion, or it seems to be beyond yeah. your discretion, because mm -hmm. it, they're to pay what we call, uh, you know, I guess ongoing bills, right. Right? right? Is there any way that that can be worked on, like, the, you know, that would be a, a, like a Republican virtue that everybody ought to get behind, you know, yeah. making a much more efficient government. Yeah, I think two things. One, this year we talked a little bit about if you're going to do a CIP um, or a capital improvement project, you need to make sure that the debt service is calculated into how much that's going to cost over right. the course of the project, which we don't do, right? We sort no. of just appropriate things and forget that we're going to pay that down the road. Um, so that's one thing. I think the other thing would be uh, to go to zero-based budgeting like the city. Um, well, you start all over. From, yeah. And you make, you, yeah. So every year the departments are justifying this is why we need this amount of money. Um, I think the city budgeting process is very interesting. Um, it's so much different than the the. The well, I've been working process. with it, you know, okay. and it's interesting because mm. I'm on the uh, Charter Commission. Mm, okay. And so we've been looking at that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's different and it has some advantages mm -hmm. and then the state does have has some too. So it would yeah. be worthwhile, yeah. I guess, there are some millenniums yeah. in, the, in the city council. Definitely. And I think maybe, I, I know they start from absolute zero. Maybe the way in the state to do it would be to start with at least things like electricity costs, you know, or baked, right? You, you can't really mess with those. Um, but I think there's a way to do that so that we're every year really examining every piece of the budget. Well, you know, one of the interesting things, talking about electricity for myself, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to put you on the spot unless you want to go there, but... You know, with this uh, purchase of Hawaiian Electric yes. that uh, yes. recently, I guess, the PUC voted against. Yeah. One of the questions I had, when it, I, I'm not that aware, mm -hmm. uh, you know, up on the entire subject, and, and, um, and which is why it's good that I'm only asking questions. <laughs> but, <laughs> but one of the things that interests me was, you know, and the question that I would ask is, you know, how, if, any, uh, if the utility got purchased, how much of the money goes to the ratepayers, mm -hmm. and how much of it to the shareholders? Right. You know, and and that kind of question about, um, you, you know, how do we deal with these issues? Mm -hmm. I I think that it would be good to test everybody. You know? Yeah, I think one of the things, and I had come out early on um, with with um, a few of the Democrats and said we need to look better at this next era thing. It shouldn't just be a done right. deal because we're not sure where the money's going to go, right? And right, it, exactly. Um, are there golden parachutes attached? What is it? Um, what is it? And uh, nothing was ever answered clearly, I don't think. Well, I st I, I'm yeah. still not happy with the with the answers that were given. Right. And, and right. you know, and I thought that it, it, we, we're 
we're really putting the focus on the on the wrong foot because if when you, when you have a regulated industry, essentially you, it's built on taxpayers' money. Right. You know, it, and then because it's guaranteed profits right. and everything that they're being that's being sold was paid for by the rate, rate payer. Right. And we have this ridiculously high, uh, yes. you know. So yes. I hope I hope yeah. that your you and your caucus come up with a solution. To yeah. The cost of energy. Oh yeah. I mean, the cost of energy has been crazy, and I think it's going to be a bipartisan solution. I think um, you know, ev we everything should be on the table from you know, modernizing the infrastructure with capital improvement project funds, right. or you know, a public option or whatever it is. I think we need to talk about all options. And yeah. put it put it all on the table yep. and and, yep. and really get and yep. get creative. You yep. know, do something. When we were dealing with affordable housing, one of the problems that we we, we dealt with in my time, was the, there was so much monopoly around, mm. okay? And in fact, what you had on this island was essentially three large landowners that were right. dictating the, um, the amount of land that would be going into housing. Yeah. You had essentially three developers, and um, you had uh, really three, three suppliers <laughs> mm. that actually did it. So we, the, we got into it in Kapolei by bringing additional land into the process, uh, cheaply, mm. which was the beginning of the villages of Kapolei. Oh. That, yeah. that happened, um, yeah, because prior to that, that was painful. See, you don't know any of this because you, <laughs> no. you, you nope. you're younger than young. <laughs> this is fantastic on one hand, but on the other hand, then I'm sounding so like historical. <laughs> but it was all Canefield. Okay. All right. Yeah. So Kapolei began, and today it's 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 you know maybe something like that dealing with um, taking industry out there yeah. some kind of way. But uh, yeah. it, how do you make s work and, and break a monopoly? And one of the problems in Hawaii is we do have this history of mo monopolistic thinking. Yeah. So, you know, breaking it apart is a good republic. That's Teddy Roosevelt. Oh, yes. Very much. Teddy Roosevelt's one of my favorite republicans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, in fact, see, you know, yeah. today, well, over the period of time, just I uh, ideologically speaking, well, uh, it you know, for a long time after Ronald Reagan, it, you got to be you don't want to be called a liberal, right. you know? And uh, and now the big word on the left side, you know, and and and, and the, with the Sanders campaign was progressive. Right. Everybody was, but progressive is a Republican word. Exactly. And yes. Progressive yes. is a word that Teddy Roosevelt's right. brand of Republicanism. Yes. yes. Thank you for bringing called. that up. Yes. You're right. Yes. And so mm -hmm. you know, I'm expecting. Yeah. Um, that you might find a lot of fertile ground with the uh, with yeah. younger people who yeah. are interested in uh, not being stuck where their parents are. Right. You right. see, I I, I think, uh, and I, I oftentimes say this that I I think people who achieve things get too possessive. For example, one of my things that people credit me with doing is the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Um, I think by now they should move on. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, something right. needs to evolve. Right. You know, right. it, it constantly evolve. Yeah. I, I, I'm talking too much, actually. <laughs> no, that's okay. It's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but we want to hear from, you know, I'm hoping to hear from your caucus uh -huh. and from other people, the Progressive Caucus, you know, mm -hmm. the Teddy Roosevelt's getting yeah. together with the... Uh, Mm -hmm. you know, the people of uh, the Democratic side. Yeah, I think there's a lot of room for that. Um, people forget that the Republican Party, Teddy Roosevelt's party, ended child labor. They exactly. broke up the trusts. You and know, Abraham Lincoln ended slavery. You yeah. know, we have this rich Cohill history. Cohill created That's the right. Hawaiian homes. Yeah. I told you about Hiram Fong right. and what he did to immigration yeah. law. Yeah. You know, uh, these are all really right. positive traits right. and they're positive solutions. And yeah. I think that one of the weaknesses of our system is that uh, today, well, I'm going to be real, but I think on the Democratic side, um, I, I think that they're getting too cautious. Mm. There are too many victories. Mm. You know, we used to be first on everything. I mean, first in this, first in that, That's true. All, yeah. all these first. Now, Hawaii would be first, right? Mm -hmm. And on the Republican side, 
they have this, ten, in my opinion, have a tendency to just latch on to whatever the national politics right. may be right. without understanding that behind those solutions may be actually be principles that mm -hmm. somehow needs to be localized, you know. Right. How, does, right. how do you apply that to Hawaii? Right, and people have been so reluctant. That's something that I've really tried to do as minority leader. And when I try to talk about it, I, people, people just tense up. People are very reluctant to talk about how do we localize these sort of principles. People want the national party. Yeah, because to they be in see control. it on television right. all the time. But you know? Hawaii is not Texas. I mean, they say that all the time to people. Hawaii is not Texas. Um, exactly. We have to appeal to people here. Exactly. Yeah. And that was what made the Democrats, uh, you know, uh, very successful. Yeah. But, you know, now we, we're sort of, as I said, I really think we're so, we need to be challenged a lot mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and, and on, on, on a whole slew of issues. Mm -hmm. um, for example, if the private sector, you know, there was a time when the University of Hawaii and the legislature really collaborated on finding solutions, mm -hmm. which is not true now. No. <laughs> You know, Not at all. but I, I don't understand yeah. why we don't we own the place. You know why we're right. not using that resource and right. and treating it like um, their resource instead mm -hmm. of an enemy. You know, right, right. I think we don't treat the university like we own it. People forget that. Like it, right. it is actually a state entity, and we fund it. So right. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So how how does that relationship mm -hmm. uh, do for the um, for you know rest of society what are we doing it's not just yeah. the play well also I you know there was a there were the legislature both Republican and Democrat because there were times in fact I, I, Vicki Wong used to tell me all the time his most valuable votes was from the other <laughs> side of the aisle because yeah. they would save him from his colleagues right. you know which yeah. by the way you probably know something about yeah <laughs> But hey, except you mean, I mean well you, anyway they would save him <laughs> from his colleagues, and 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 the whole idea of creating a Hawaii based uh, paradigm I think would be yeah. exciting. Yeah. And yeah. that's what I'm hoping uh, you become known. I am as. working on it. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Good for you. Yeah. And what? What? Well, real quickly, what is? What was your? What's your priority right now? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. it's housing. Uh, affordable yeah, it's affordable housing. housing. I think. I think it. It has to be that the cost of living is really going up, and and young people are leaving Hawaii in droves, and we need affordable housing. Well, I don't want to ask, but yeah. real quickly, a um, little bit about yourself. You have any children? I don't. No. Nope. Not yet. Not yet. No. 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 Yeah. Just but you, uh, you got a husband. I'm I have sure. a husband. And yes, that's was where the Chang comes from. Yeah, the yes. Chang comes from that. And he wasn't he chairman of the Republican. He was, yes. Yes. Oh, see, see, no. So we got two for the price of one. That's right. Two, yeah. <laughs> two more well, yeah. I want to thank you so much for being on my thank show. You. Yeah. I wish you well. Thank you. And I hope you the greatest success in, thank you. in, in the legislature. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Come back in two weeks and you'll talk story with John Wahey. Thank you very much.